button today, man. I don't know what happened. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, here is our map number one in our third best of three of the day. Yes, third best of three of the day. We got a lot of best of threes for all of you today. As we're getting into this, we have got the members of Magnitude on the left-hand side, Gazlo, Joanna, Rainer, Anduin, Asmodan. Over on the side of Gambit Gaming, we have got the Brightwing, Varian, Tychus, Leoric, Orphea. Today's prediction, the prediction right now, is does Asmodan finish 400 stacks by the end of the game? Asmodan baseline, Annihilation can go up to 400. This is what you're gambling on. Will he finish these 400 stacks by the end of the game? He does have Gluttony, which builds up the stacks a lot faster, so long as he's hitting enemy heroes with the Globe of Annihilation. So you can see right there, four stacks, he hit one enemy hero. Been up since 9 p.m. last night. It's been busy today. I can't sleep my normal time. That's rough. I hope you find some good sleep, bud. A lot of damage going on to Polite Gamer. Leoric with the Wraith walk out. Dan able to get the uh, right wing face shift. Another condemn from Joanna. Groups up the enemy. And there you go. Get your gambles in on that one because it looks like Asmodan, he's going to be working through this, though. But Joanna will fall quite quickly here. Punk getting a little bit low. Anduin gets some healing. Another dunk out from Asmodan. 38 stacks and he'll tap well. Tychus to go to top lane and start soaking up for the ally crew. There's a stream title. There is a stream title. There is a stream title. Just below the giant box of moving images that you're seeing, uh, there's a there's a there's a long string of characters that gives you the information as to what's happening on the stream. It's crazy. Really? That's all the gambling? What happened to like the 20,000 gambling? What happened, team? What happened? What happened to the to the gambles? I I'm distraught. A uh, little bit of a fight contestion over the bottom lane Siege Giants, but it seems like uh, the Gazlo is going to be forced away by the Tychus. We do have Joanna coming down here as well. Not sure if he's, she's going to be looking for Soak. Oh, no, she's coming in on this one. But uh, Tychus might shred through. Varian's here as well. He doesn't have level 4, so he's not a real boy. Still charges in. Sets up a little bit of damage onto the Gazlo, who does throw back the Explodium Charge as well. And seems like with the mass rotation to bottom, this will be Siege Giants over to the side of Gambit Gaming. Cowardice betting, chat. Cowardice betting. I'm disappointed for you. Also, good to see you, Ton. Hope you're having a great day, bud. Just continue to clear through the bottom lane. 90 stacks for the Asmodan as we're about two minutes in. Leoric. Does he have a slow? I was looking to see if he was going to prioritize the Gazlo, but he can't really land... The Spectral Leech and continue the pressure as the Anduin does go down. My apologies. That'll be another kill over to the side of Gambit Gaming. Second kill for them. And they'll push up a little bit further in their experience department as well. We should go ahead and show their 741 experience. A little bit uh, from the Mercenaries as well. Which we will see uh, the Bruiser Camp grab for the mid lane in just a second here. Oh, Nancy, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it all gets resolved easily. I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, just Nancy, just let us know who to beat up, and we'll and we'll uh, we'll go beat him up. Hey Ruby, what's up, bud? Ruby, you missed it. I just casted a Ruby game. You missed it. Another dunk out from the Asmodan. Dan gonna be able to wraith walk away. Sorry, this eyelash in my eye. Turn in, uh, not available for the side of, of, uh, Gambit Gaming, but it's, it's close. Hey, Punk, what's up, bud? That's a little laser out from Asmodan. Punk continuing to pressure out the enemy with these Globes of Annihilation. And building out the baseline stacking as well as the level 1. Level 1 almost done. Really, really good stacking from the Asmodan player right now as they continue just to get that cooldown reduction potential for the quest. As you'll have 0.25 from the mini wave, 0.5 from the enemy heroes, taunt from the very and a lot of damage on to the Gazlo. He does go down a third kill to the side of our red team as a huge soothing miss from Brightwing will allow the allies to back away. Joanna did not go for the subdue at level 4. We don't have that 80% slow. Leoric pushing up a bottom wave. Punk ignoring the Leoric in the rotation to get the, the soak and the stacks. Turn in. 
Exists for both sides. Tychus with 12. He's got enough right here. Can Joanna interrupt him? Yes, one condemn will do it, but will Joanna be punished for this? Absolutely she is, and that'll be a lot of gems dropped from her. That is something to keep in mind. That is a little bit of the gem economy dropped. Uh, we're looking at, I think that was like 18 or so gems. Uh, Punk... Uh, Punk Rock Pirate, thank you for the four tier one gifted subs. I will resend your alert when we get out of game. Thank you very much for the generosity, uh, Punk Rock Pirate. Thank you very much for the four tier one gifted subs. Oh, did Weenus? Ah, Weenus got hit. Nice. I got Rob. You got Mala. You got Weenus. You got Mr. I'm Stuck. You got a lot of cuties in chat. Thank you very much for the four tier one gifted subs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here come the Red Web Weavers from the side of Gambit Gaming. We do have a laser out onto Orpheus. She backs away. Varian comes in with the taunt. That's a lot of damage onto Joanna. The Leap of Fate does pull her out. And she's safe for now with the Shield Glare backing away. Polite Gamer will be able to tap well. Captain Roberts getting some more pressure onto the wave, trying to clear things out. Asmodan to clear mid lane. Bottom lane still far back right now. We'll see what the priority is from Gambit Gaming as they want to take down this fort front gate. Maybe even go for fort. Leoric Wraith walks back. The gate does go down. The wave is still pretty good, but the main web weaver will expire here with Varian tanking quite a bit of damage. Needs to back away. Mid lane, as I mentioned, Punk getting the clear on that Asmodan. And here's the bottom lane web weaver. Leoric comes down here. He's going to soak up that uh, quarter experience that did sit on the ground for a little bit. And how much value can Leoric find? Will it be the fort front gate? That's half of the quest done right there. 210 stacks out of the 400. So believers, uh, believers are on a good pace, but still, it's anyone's game between the two teams. Let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what those look like, as we have not had a chance to look at the damage healing experience for map number one in our third best of three of the day. Top lane for it to be Siege, as this is a lot of pressure onto Leoric, and he's able to Wraith walk away without losing much, if any real major HP right there. He, I think it was uh, Spectral leeching off of someone during all of that. The top lane for it drops to around 50 or so percent. Varian comes in. There's going to be a Condemn from Joan to pull people around. Varian with the Lion's Fang to get some slow. Commandeer Odin does come out, and with these Annihilation and these, uh, what are the missile names again? Ragnarok Missiles. This should be enough to take down the fort. Commandeer Odin also outranges all structures. I think it has a range of, what is it, 11? It has a range of 9. It has a range of 9, so it still outranges all structures, as the max range on structures is 8, and the front towers on forts and keeps are 7.8. Top lane fort does not fall, in, in my expectations. We do have the blue web weavers to descend for the side of magnitude. Can they start to get some pressure? Asmodan, great seizure. So is Gazlo. So is Rainer, really, but no 10 talents here for the time being. I expect it to be a Hyperion to see Jin. It's a uh, demonic invasion as well. Falling Sword, Black Hole. There's the Hyperion. This feels way earlier for early for the uh, Hyperion. Hyperion will stop somewhere around here, if I'm not mistaken, on the range. I would have liked to see Hyperion casted from like right around here so the Yamato Cannon finds more value, and there it goes expiring. So. I would have liked to see Hyperion casted here. It did zone back the enemy and create a little bit of space. Falling Sword, Light Bomb, that's a lot of damage onto Orphea. Eternal Feast as well. Tyke is shredding through Punk right now. We do have Gazla with a easy, not an easy throw dynamite. Explodium Charge on the right hand side. Gazla trying to back away with just a sliver of HP. Another dunk out from As Asmodan. Almost gets the kill on Brightwing, but Asmodan, the one to fall in this engagement, 0 to 5 and kills. Leap of Faith from the Anduin. Taunt from Varian will connect on to Polite Gamer, who's trying to back away, pops the Iron Skin. A couple a couple autos are necessary, but can't get the Shadow Waltz. As the top lane fort does fall, the members of Magnitude getting some value from this first Web Weaver phase. But still, 0-5 to five in kills and experience and a gap in levels has formed. Look at that Asthma booty. He must work out. Oh, Asmodan must work out. Twenty-eight gems in the pocket for Magnitude. Gambit Gaming's got sixty-four currently, sixty-five and rising, as they will have enough for that turn. And who's actually got the vast majority of these? We can actually take a look really quickly. Twenty-seven on Leork. Leork is kind of the uh I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a term. He's 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 the uh if he, if he were to walk into the casino, he'd be considered a whale. There you go. 
They would they would they would immediately give him all priority service. <laughs> Whereas I walk into a casino and they're like, don't serve that guy. No, it's, it's usually because I just walk in with like a band t-shirt. I don't, I'm not dressed in a suit. I don't look like I have a lot of money. Right wing goes down. We do have the Yamato cannon firing out. See, this is, I, see, this is the positioning I really like from the Rainer because you get a lot of that Yamato cannon value. You zone back the enemy. You get damage out from the Hyperion onto the enemy wave as well. Overall, really good siege through mid lane from the side of Magnitude who are trying to bring things back big and tune from the orc. But is it really that big? Because the Leap of Faith from Anduin just pulled the Joanna out. Commandeer Odin with its Annihilation and Ragnarok missiles are zoning back the enemy and the mid lane fort will stay alive. It's gonna be on a sliver of HP, but it still will be alive. Leorc with 40 gems currently. Asmodan? Yes, Asmodan. Shield Glare from Joanna does interrupt once. Condemn will get another interrupt right there. Duncan from Asmodan. Chest dies with the Piercing Light. Doesn't get a stack, but currently at three. Light Bomb from the Anduin. Falling Sword. Not used, actually. It was used a little late. Falling Sword after. Gravel Bomb. That's going to pull in one Eternal Feast. A lot of damage onto the Gazlo. He will go down. Polymorph on to Polite Gamer. Trying to back away, pops the Iron Skin. There's an Entomb from Leoric. Punk might be dead here. Varian comes around the corner, taunt in one second. Punk still goes down. That's enough for a turn in. Asmodan at 332 stacks. Now, how much value can they get from this Webweaver phase? Because that was a couple kills in quick succession. But the Webweavers still have to descend into lane, and I think it's still like 10 or so seconds from when you finish the turn in to when they actually descend into lane. It actually might be longer than 10 seconds. It might be somewhere in the 15 to 20 second range. My old neighbor used to tell his wife he was going fishing, but stuff his suit into a chest, uh, stuff his suit into chest waiters and go to casino instead. Called it a suit in a boot. <laughs> Is Punk dead? Not right now. Punk's alive. I mean, Punk has really never been dead, if you consider it. Like, it's always been a it's always been a viable music genre. I don't think Punk's ever died. It's not like Disco. You know, they, they said, like, Disco was dead. Orvia does die as the Webweavers descend into lane. Asmodan with his summonables, I think it was. Actually got the kill into Brightwing. I'm not 100% sure. As Tychus picks up all those gems, Red Webweavers had, have gotten into lane. And this is going to be three for two in trades. Asmodan with another dunk out. Mid lane already cleared. And bottom lane should lose the fork. Is Butt dead? All right, Web Weavers will end, and I do think this is enough for another turn in, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's that's way more than enough for, for a turn in. Yeah, they've got 14 excess, but there's still 10 seconds of uh, cooldown on the clutch for turn in. So we have the top lane fort fall, the bottom lane fort to go down. Siege Giants available. Polite Gamer just checking. A little bit of a fight over the turn in area. That's a leap of faith to save. The Gazlo as he tries to throw a laser back. Dan still chasing out, has the Entomb. Joanna might get caught here. Nah, oh! If if Leoric wasn't slowed, he would have actually been in range for that Entomb. That would have been amazing up against the Joanna because she would have been locked in right there between the two walls and everything, and the range damage would have been enough from Tychus and friends. Either way, Chastise not connecting. Shield Glare does interrupt once. 30 gems from the... Tychus and a fort does fall on the right hand side for Gambit Gaming, but they're not too concerned because they're looking for a mid lane push. Asmodan, 386 stacks. Alrighty. Top lane gonna get is gonna descend really far down to lane right by the fort. Bottom lane, pretty far down as well. Mid lane, right in front of the fort over here. Dan does have in tomb. Leoric just got that off a of cooldown. He's looking for it. He grabs two. Anduin's one of the target. Eternal Feast inside as well. Grab a bomb and great explodium charge into the back line. Orphea Anduin traded. Leoric is gonna try and spectral leech through this, but he can't get enough healing over time. That will be Leoric to fall. He can cheat death. Asmodan throwing some dunks out. He is two stacks away from finishing it out as the members 
of magnitude are turning this fight and the siege around, but Asmodan, he's got to clear the waves because he does not want to lose that top lane keep. The Globe of Annihilation, the baseline, is going to be completed right there. Stun onto one. Right wing. Oh, wait, Hulk, can they turn this around with the taunt from Varian? Doesn't look like it. Varian, if he can close the distance, would be huge, but no. Oh, wait, hold on. Dan? No, he won't be able to get it off a of respawn either. So Asmodan saves top. He also does finish out the baseline Annihilation. So I'll pay out that bet in a second. Mid lane quickly sieged into. I don't know if they take this down. The rotation is quick enough out from the side of Magnitude to defend. Banner out. There's going to be a Light Bomb, but the Polymorph stops any sort of Falling Sword combination. Right side, we're going to see a Bruiser Camp as well. Dan is going to be just anchoring for the team as the, there, there could be a rotation in from this uh, corridor, but it looks like the Joanna and friends are going to just go ahead and grab this camp. Leoric is trying to check. He is going to check. He shows... I don't know if he actually showed while they were grabbing this. Not 100% sure. Or if you're looking for something, Joanna steps in with a big condemn and Leoric with the entomb. There's no fort down here to fall back to. It's all the way down to a keep. Leoric gets the wraith walk. There's going to be the falling sword. Dan trying to get the uh, Spectre Leash, but can't land it. Another dunk out from Asmodan as he has that cooldown reduction and full annihilation. Ezo looking to back away, and Varian does fall. Joanna with the Condemn pulls a lot of people into the fort front gate, and Asmodan dunk doesn't get the kill, but it's so very low for Orphea. She taps the well on the disengage and gets the face shift from Brightwing. As the Commandeer Odin will be called down, dunk out from Asmodan, blinks from the Brightwing, and we have enough for a turn in for the side of Magnitude. Will they be able to get it? Mid lane, key, uh, mid lane fort taking a bit of damages. Gazelle has to go clear things out right there. And Tomb from Leoric on a five second cooldown. Mm, bottom lane fort saved. There was one siege giant that's almost got a secondary rock thrown. Turn in. Magnitude looking for this turn in. They only need another six gems. Who's got it right now? Uh, it's Gazlo. Gazlo has to go turn in. He's got 11. Will they boss plus Webweaver? Will they try and tag boss plus the Webweaver? Rainer shows in wave. He's just going to pick up some gems. Okay. Asmodan did tag the camp over here, so he's going to be able to burn right through that. Did go into the Hell Rift as well. A lot of siege potential from this talent. I really like it myself as well. The crit kickers you get are absolutely wild. And your siege potential through structures is, is just out of this world. Speaking of siege, actually, what's the uh, stats look like? Hey, yeah, look at that siege from Asmodan. 137,000. Rounding up, obviously. He's also got the highest heroic damage. Granted, a lot of his damage is kind of splash poke and everything else in between. Rainer with 61,000. On the opposing side, Orphea with nearly 69,000. That will round up. She's got 69,000 heroic damage. 20 talents here for our red... or for Yeah, for our red team, excuse me, for Gambit Gaming. And also, the members of Magnitude grab their own 20s. We have Pride for the Asmodan. So he's got the area of, of effect is increased by 25 or 15% and additional uh, 125 damage. So this is good synergy with the baseline as we have Varian trying to zone back the enemy. Rainer going to go into Sergeant Pepper as well. So you have the uh, give... Given Pepper now activates every third basic attack, so it's one less auto to get that, that burst ability. Synergize as well with the level 1 and 4 as well, as you will be able to build up your veteran marksman and your behemoth armor quite quickly. Commandeer Odin does have that big red button. We do have the Entomb with the Buried Alive. Joanna steps through that big gravel bomb from the Gazlo with the Black Hole level 20. Polite Gamer gets the... Light Bomb steps back into the enemy, chastised from the Anduin. I don't think it got a pierce through on that one, but still five stacks. Gamer goes down. Joanna's out for the next 62 seconds. Is this the turnaround moment that the members of Gambit Gaming needed? Well, they still got a clear top, mid, and bottom as the waves are pushed up, but a boss could be a call. Bro my stats. Stats, bro. All right, you guys want some stats? Here you go. Here's some stats. Here's some stats at the bottom of your screen. Enjoy. Anyone free Harrison Jones? No, he's dude, he's right here. He's right here. Look at him, chat. He's right here. 
He's just chilling. He's just chilling, waiting for, for someone to free him. I was wondering if you could click on Harrison Jones if he had a model info thingy. But no. Uh, big hearth out from the bottom lane as the boss does come through top. Turn in is eight gems away, so that's uh, roughly three waves for the side of Gambit Gaming. Tychus will find a few through top. There is a mid wave, and Leork should be able to get through bottom. Yeah, there's the turn in availability. With the boss in top lane, this should be a big enough window for a turn in. As we're actually going to swap visions really quickly, just trying to see what these teams are seeing. Varian's going to go clear out bottom lane a little bit here. Hoping the web weaver descends a little further down to lane. And actually, Leork's the one that has to turn in right now. It seems like it's a little bit of wave management first. But because of that, this will give opportunity and a chance for Magnitude to clear out the boss, which they did, push up the waves, and potentially mitigate some of the web weaver phasing here. 30 gems still on this Leoric as he mops up a wave through bottom. You can actually see in mid lane, d d does Leoric see this right now? He sees the Joan, he sees the Asmodan. He knows, uh, he knows the Anduin's in mid as well. Asmodan drops a... Uh, Raw heroic into top lane. There is a wave behind it, but uh, did he go for it? No, he went for the Ani uh, the pride at level 20. Let's see, these get about. Ah, uh... uh, Reyna's gonna throw Hyperion up here as well. Yamato Cannon won't take this down. It's only dealing 1,811 damage. So he'll get two Yamatos out of this. Oh, the red team gets the turn in. Gambit Gaming with the turn in, and. Light Bomb, Falling Sword, connects on to the Tychus. Big black hole, big pull in. That's going to be an Entomb from Leork on the bottom of our screen as well. Eternal Feast finding proc after proc as Wraithling is trying to back away on that Anduin. Has the speed of Pius as well, getting that speed boost. Big Duncan from the Asmodan getting huge cooldown reductions. Half a second per enemy hero hit. 0.25 by uh, Minions hit. Varian comes in for the taunt, and it looks like with a Polymorph, that's going to be a solid pentakill to the side of Gambit Gaming. Uh, they don't even need the minion wave. They can just rush right through. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a... Stream Deck, you have one job. You had one job, Stream Deck. You had literally one job. Either way. In favor for the side of Gambit Gaming, and they will take map number one here on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Really, really well played between both sides, but it is going to be the side of Gambit Gaming with map one. This is a best of three, though, so we'll see. Will this continue to be the motif of the day of two O's, or will we potentially see a three or a third map? We'll find out here in just a little bit as we're heading to map number two. Gambit Gaming with map one. GG. Good evening, sir. It is 1119 in Finland. Uh, Turba. Hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I, I googled how to say hello in Finnish. It's just hey. 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 I hope you're having a fantastic evening. Let's see. Let, hold on one second. Uh. Uh. Mita kululu. <laughs> Mita kulu. Mita kulu. There you go. I did my best finish for you. Uh, let's pay out the people. Choose outcome. How many level one stacks? Um, will Asmodan finish the foreign stacks? Yes, he is. 400 and done. Hey! <laughs> I was expecting it to be something fancy. Like, like in, in Romanian, it's, um... What is, what is hello in Romanian? Oh my god, I'm blanking. I can say good day, like Buna Sera. Uh, Chemai Fachets, it's just that's how are you. Oh my god, I'm blanking on it. V2? V2U. Uh, map number two.
Oh, it's Bunazita. Okay. I guess, yeah, I mean, there's there's Bunacera, Bunaziwa, which I guess is more like good day, good afternoon, stuff like that. Uh, let's see, the players are on the same sides, which is good for us, so let's go ahead and update the scores. Um, Kensei Mi Moka? Ma Maoka? What is that? Oh, it's another way to say hello. Uh, translation. It's hi there. Moika. Moika. There you go. Moika. I'll do my best to remember that. Uh, really quickly, I am going to run to the bathroom. I, I usually don't take a break during the middle of a series, but I just we've had a lot of fluids and we've been casting for two and a half hours straight with really not getting up besides getting more tea. So let me go ahead and run to the bathroom really, really quickly. And for this next game, we'll do a uh, we'll do a boss prediction. We'll do a boss prediction for the next game. So I'll set everything up and then I'll run and then I'll come back and we'll do the game. OK, uh, which team gets first boss? Uh, Magni Magnitude, uh, Gambit, Gambit Gaming, or No Boss Taken. All right, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I just, I just have to run to the bathroom, so. Panic? Don't panic. You, you're not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just, I'll be back. Don't worry. It's okay. went somewhere god dang it god god dang it bobby uh what are those thank you again punk rock pirate for the four tier one gifted subs thank you thank you thank you very much all right with that i think we are ready to go let's go ahead and jump into map number two we're going to towers of doom and i'll start the prediction when we get the game let's get into it Prepare yourself for battle. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Nexus Gaming Series, Division B West of Magnitude versus Gambit Gaming. On the left-hand side, we have Magnitude with a Li Ming, Sylvanas, Zul, Garrosh, and Stukov. On the side of Gambit Gaming, it is going to be Anduin, Dahaka, Genji, Stitches, and Kael'thas. Now, I have a prediction going for all of you right now, and it's that which team will get the first boss? Will it be the side of Magnitude? Will it be the side of Gambit Gaming? Or will there be no boss taken? As a reminder, if you do not gamble, Five, Jeff Bezos four, takes your points. He literally three, just takes your channel two, points, and he one. uses it to make everyone else's life harder. So Five, be sure to gamble, and be sure to gamble on all three options. Nancy, thank you for the Tier 1 gifted sub to Punk Rock Pirate. Thank you for 962 generous donations to this channel. Thank you so much, Nancy, for the gifted subs. Thanks for the cast, Baja. My pleasure. Thanks for playing the games. Bottom lane, a little bit of uh, Savannah Siege right now. Garrosh is going to be going into, I believe it's the Unrivaled Strength, yes, as he's going to be able to have that Wrecking Ball throw range and increased damage. Stitches with a slam on the ground as he gets the hook onto the Stukov, who tries to back away, throwing up that Lurking Arm with the level 1 as well. That low blow. Groundbreaker from Garrosh looking at the Genji. And Li Ming splash damage is enough. First blood over the side of Magnitude. Answering back here in Towers of Doom. How dare the Gravekeeper touch Doom's towers? 
Well, it's the it's the Raven Lord versus the Gravekeeper. That is that is uh, that's 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 your lore of the map. Also, also, as you can see, there's different sigils here. You can see that there's the Raven Lord or there's the Gravekeeper right there. I know there's a fight breaking out, but you can also see that there's the Raven Lord crest on the other side of the map. There's a lot of little thematic things across the map like this. Even the bell towers look different as well. The bell towers for the gravekeeper have little uh, gravekeepers on them. You can see right there, little gravekeeper dude. And the uh, raven lord, he's got little ravens on it. And if you look at the mini map when the missiles fire, it actually, from the gravekeeper side, there are little skulls on the mini map. And if you look at uh, the opposing side, if you look at the raven lord, when his missiles fire, they're little ravens. They're very, very similar, but it's, it's, they're, there's slight difference in the animation. Really cool. I, like, thematically, like, Towers of Doom is such a great map. There's so many cool little things on a map like this. There's also the spirit healer over here. Uh, she shows up when you're dead, but of course, since we're observing, we always get to see her. Indomitable popped by the Garrosh as he backs away. Summon the Grave Golems. <laughs> That's the tournament I'm gonna run one day. Heck, heck, heck a Heroes of the Storm land. Heroes of the Storm, Lackhearts Bay, uh, Haunted Mines, Warhead Junction. Let's, let's just do a tournament with all the worst maps. Or the maps that no one plays on. Good drag from Dahaka as the rotation from the ally team is coming through. Captain Roberts drops the bone prison onto Dahaka. He's got the lurker strain from level four, allowing him to burrow and have the knockback as well as the speed and invincibility. Actually, no speed. Sorry, it's no speed. It's just the invincibility. He has the the speed reduction onto the enemy for 30% for three seconds. Here comes our first objective phase of the game. Going to be top left and right is the standard. These are always here. This bottom one is where the RNG is. It could be in bottom or it could be in center, as I like to call that. Wow, the altars have 50,000... No, they have half a million HP. Didn't know that. Oh, do the altars have a unique name? Scoring altar. Regen per second, 10,000. I think that might be the highest HP thing in Heroes of the Storm. I don't think there's anything in Heroes of the Storm that has more HP than that. Toss out from the Garrosh. We do have the Lurker Strain once again from Dan. Genji gonna get the Swift Strike. That's a low, the Living Bomb! The damage over time! Genji will go down! That's a 3 for 2, and I think the members of Gambit Gaming are absolutely fine with that. Better yet, hack into the game and unlock Chromie Stitches pool parties, dude. Those are so. Those need. Those need to be allowed as as a just a, a custom game map that you can just choose. I agree. All right, siege camp on the left to be taken. Siege camp on the right. A little slower. No invade though. Could I always make those maps or things in those maps be like a bingo card? Like pay for cannon shots three times in one game? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I love the PvE brawls we used to get. Oh man, what was it? The race, the, the Braxis Holdout race map? Where you would literally like race through the map with like four heroes? That was so much fun. I loved, what I loved about that is that there was literally people grouping up to set like world records on how fast they could do it. That was my favorite thing. That literally people started speed running it to see how fast they could do it. Oh yeah, yeah, they had the, uh, they had the, uh, what was it, the, um... Uh, it was like the rocket racing or something like that? The altars rise again. I forget the specific name, but yeah, yeah. Those, that rocket racing was kind of fun. All right. Well, you heard that laugh. That means boss is up and available on the map. We'll see if anyone's going to be able to get the boss here, the horseman, as he is the Merc Horseman Defender. All right, single altar in the bottom of the map. We'll go ahead and keep an eye at the top. Top. Uh, speaking of the top, we actually have our 10 Talentiers coming through soon in favor for the side of Magnitude first, as they've got a little more experience, but the channel is started by the Kael'thas, and that's a very low Stukov who has to back away. I don't know if Garrosh can get in here and delay things out. He's not going to be able to. Drag from Dahaka, Gravity Laps from the Kael'thas, Hook from the Stitches, Indomitable may be popped, but he is not invulnerable. 
and that will be the stitch the garage to go down 10 talent tiers still going through in favor for magnitude as the double soak from Zul is closing that experience or e keeping the experience gap look at look at that look at the I guess managing the experience gap I mean it's a 3,000 minion experience difference between the two teams when we look at 10 talent tiers skeletal mages warlords challenge massive shove wailing arrow and disintegrate over on the opposing side gorge x-strike light bomb I'm assuming Isolation and Phoenix, but Pyroblast is definitely an option. I think Phoenix is just a better zoning tool in general. Like the board game they did in the holidays. Don't bring up the board game, you're gonna upset some people. People got mad about the board game thing. New Year Rocket Ride, all those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind it where you have the um, the the brawl maps where like it's like like five Sonyas versus five Sonyas. Like I miss that stuff too. I miss I miss getting like five v five of the same character. That was a blast. The I mean there was there was the the asthma dunk. Uh, there was the asthma dunk one as well. That was super fun on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Like infinitely scaling your dunk up, like that was that was just a good. That, I don't know why those maps aren't just like added in, but maybe, maybe it's a coding thing with Heroes of the Storm. Who knows, honestly. Double Alter Phase gonna be coming up. Sappers through the bottom lane. One, two, three gonna be coming through and powered by the Savannas with her level four Might of the Banshee Queen. Toss from the Garrosh. Uh, Genji's able to get away as well. Was there like a weird interaction right there? Feels like Garrosh did, wanted to throw him here, but Genji ended up over here with maybe like the agility. We do have Zul and Dahaka trading out shots. And uh, I do think that was, did that fi did five shots go over? I'm trying to look really quickly and see if the five shots did get channeled or if it was a little too soon. And of course, Genji gets over the far wall. That's going to be a uh, massive shove from the Stukov as well, just to force back the Genji. Sorry, I'm, or the stitches. I'm just looking to see if those shots did count as four or five. Sorry, I'm I'm just I'm I'm looking really quickly back at the stream. I think it was I think it was just four and four. Though that wouldn't make sense when it comes to core HP being 25. So actually, yeah, it's probably it's probably four and uh, five and three. Hey, Creeper, what's up? Any leapers in chat? Remember all the no the the all Nova map? Oh, dude, that was so much fun. Board game was fun, except it went from November till July. But what about Christmas in July? As someone who had to work in retail, I hate Christmas music. I, I, I just, I can't do Christmas music, man. Like, November 1st hits. It wasn't even November 1st, it was like October something. And they started playing Christmas music at the sushi place I worked. And then it kept going until like, early to mid, to like, late January, early February. And I was like, please, for the love of God, stop the Christmas music. But that's just me. I had to work in retail. I had to work in, I had, well, re retail, uh, working in a kitchen and serving. The, now, the Brawls of the Punishers? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, those were just so much fun. Uh, that's a good combo out onto Genji. Li Ming comes through with a big burst and Genji locked in place will go down. We do have still five potential shots as Dahaka gets into the back line. Gets the isolation of Stukov, but he really doesn't care. He still goes for the ch uh, channel, regardless of any sort of uh, dino head thrown onto him. And now five shots into the enemy core. We are looking at 25 to 27 in core HP. Sapper, one, two, three, make it in through the bottom lane as this fort will be locked down by Savannah. She has those black arrows. She gets gorged. There's the leap of faith. Light bomb, good timing onto that one. Catches the Savannah. She will go down, but the bell tower is gonna be converted. Massive shove from the Stukov. Just pushes back the stitches, but he's not gonna be pushed back too far. Dahaka gets the clear through the mid lane. More sappers to potentially be fed in through bottom. Garrosh can toss these sappers, but it's Genji who comes in with a swift strike, getting a little bit of revenge for that earlier kill. The hook is like a pixel shy of hitting Stukov as the Zul continues to double soak, keeping that experience over in favor for his ally crew as no one has gotten bossed just yet. Christmas music is awful in October. 
I think Christmas music belongs in the month of December, and that is it. You are you are allowed to play Christmas music from December 1st to December 31st, and then on January 1st, you shut that shit off. Hey, Mr. I'm stuck. What's up, bud? I think they all just hate it because of the theme and the fact that it's not changing as a sign of the beginning of the end. Huh? Beginning of the end? The end is nigh? Which team gets boss? Uh, that's gonna be Magnitude. Magnitude did get boss. I'm gonna pay that out now before I do forget. Magnitude got boss. Warlord's challenge, Wailing Arrow, a lot of damage, and that's gonna be a kill onto the Genji. Zul with the channel on the left, Kael'thas with the channel on the bottom, mid, excuse me. Missiles to be traded. Ani gonna be going for the uh, channel here. Uninterrupted! Dahaka couldn't get in. A, a good CC overall from Garrosh. Hook out from the stitches. He gets a gorge. I think that's a dead stuke off. He massive shoves. There's a light, but yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I would accept it until January 7th because of Orthodox Christmas. Sure, whatever. You know, just, we don't need like four months of Christmas music. I know I'm exaggerating, but still, we don't need, we don't need three to four months of Christmas music. Nobody needs that. Nobody needs that. Hey, Iron Flare, what's up, bud? Sorry, I missed you earlier. What's up? December 26th, you shut it off. Yeah. Time for the New Year's music. I think people just play Feliz Navidad on, on, on repeat, right? From the 26th to the to the 31st, that's the only music you're allowed to listen to, is New Year's Eve music. I can accept starting right up to Thanksgiving. Yeah, I can accept that. I can. My personal thing is I actually, uh, every year before, uh, excuse me, the day after Thanksgiving, I always go and get my Christmas tree. That's, that's my, the day after Thanksgiving, I get my Christmas tree. The day, the New Year's Day, January 1st, that's when my Christmas tree goes down. That's my, that's my rule of thumb. Christmas stuff can go up from the day after Thanksgiving uh, until New Year's Day, and then you take that shit down. Unless, unless you're like me and you get like eight feet of snow and everything is buried until the spring. Then you have an excuse, but that's because no one can see it. You only play Christmas music parodies? I, I might be, I might be, I might be okay with that. Uh, it seems like we'll have the trade onto the altars right now. Dahaka's not, yeah, this is just gonna be trade onto altars. So four to four in shots, but it will be, what? Night, uh, not 19, 17 to 11 in core HP. Wait, hold on. A lot of damage in the bottom. That's gonna be a really good wailing arrow. The Skeletal Mages, indomitable, huge Warlord's challenge. Extract from the Genjis used as a cleanse tool. Rizzo trying to back away on the Anduin, getting some heals out. There's a Gorge onto Zul. Pyroblast onto Wraithling. I don't think there's anything Sylvanas can do to live right there. As the Glass Cannon Li Ming still throws out some damage, Zul does go down. It's a double kill for the side of Gambit Gaming. Thanksgiving is in October. In the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, there's HP Lovecraft curls? Wait, I'm interested. Are they all like Cthulian and shit? Is it like Christmas carols, but like Cthulhu's rising from the abyss? Oh, Garrosh, really? Earthshaker level four, or level 16, excuse me. Dahaka goes down in top, and bottom lane fork goes down. I mean, I think that's a fair trade. You close the experience gap for magnitude. To be fair, they need more Thanksgiving songs. I don't know a single Thanksgiving song. I, 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 I know they exist, but I couldn't, like, I couldn't, like, tell you the name of one. For Lee Snavy Dad. Yes, yes, for Lee Snavy Dad. They're amazing. Okay, I have to check these out. I would love, I would love Christmas carols about eldritch horrors. Now that I can get into. 
But I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Stop tattling. Stitch, snitches get stitches. And doing with the five shots. We do have these sappers in through the bottom lane potentially as well. Li Ming taking a lot of damage. We do have a warlord's challenge from the Garrosh as he tries to back away. One, two, three sappers do go through the bottom lane. Wailing arrow from the Savannah. It's nine to eight in core HP between these two teams. There's a heavy metal Christmas song which becomes somewhat of a tradition in Finland. I know that there's a there's like um there's a there's a metal album with a bunch. I'm sorry, are we pure Archon power, eh? Pure or Archon pure power, eh? All right. Pyroblast from Lee Ming or uh, excuse me, Pyroblast onto the Zul at full HP. Boss is back up. Lee Ming goes down to the Genji. That's one. Or excuse me, Genji goes down to the Lee Ming. Sorry, I read that backwards. I saw the Swift strike in and I saw a death. Okay, still two for one in favor for the side of Gambit Gaming. Jingle Bells is written for Thanksgiving. Christmas stole it. Wait, what? Really? But yeah, there's a there was like a there was like a a metal album of like various artists who were doing uh, different Christmas songs, and I I found it back in I remember being in high school because my buddies I found it and I was showing my buddy. And eventually, like, his dad, like, a week or two later was like, Hey, John, what's your favorite Christmas song? And he goes, Oh, uh, uh, Little Drummer Boy by Tortured Conscience. Because that is, that is, I think that's one of the covers. I believe that's what it is. Uh, and it is very, very funny because it's a death metal band doing Little Drummer Boy. I saw Cthulhu consuming Santa's soul. I, I would listen to that 100%. Uh, four shots out from Gambit Gaming. Magnitude getting lower and lower in that core HP. Double altar face coming up. This could be game ending for either team. This could be game ending for either team. Both altars, if channeled by Gambit, they win. Both altars by the side of Magnitude, they win. Let's see what happens. Is it a trade? All right, there's four shots in. One HP on the left-hand side. L uh, hooking on to the Li Ming. We have a Genji into the back line. Huge Titanic toss from level 20. Li Ming is able to back away. And uh, that is... Uh, Wait, is Boss still up? No, Boss got taken right. I forgot. I forgot Boss also doesn't disappear on this map. I had this moment. I was like, <gasps> could they win? Well, not at the moment, but it is going to be lethal for both teams. In the sense of, well, four, four, uh, this is, this is crazy right now. I love Towers of Doom. This is why I love this map so much. Ravenlord gets those four shots into the Gravekeeper over here. Think about it. Jingle Bells never says the name of the holiday. I, to be honest, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't think of like any of the lyrics. Besides, like, the general chorus, but, yeah, I, I couldn't, I, like, yeah. I don't remember much of that one. I don't normally see snow on Thanksgiving, though. It makes a lot of reference to uh, the dead of winter. I believe that New Year's and Christmas stole it. Uh, I mean, for us, where I live, absolutely there's usually snow around Thanksgiving. Absolutely usually. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's actually, now that I think back to it, it's really, really common for us to have snow around Thanksgiving up here. The mountains, like, like, the mountains, the ski resorts, they typically open a week or two before Thanksgiving. And then we usually are blacked out for Thanksgiving. And then we all go skiing, like, a day or two after. Wait, are they gonna get the barrage? Wait, they got the barrage. Boss is up in 250. Bottom lane, so only one shot went through. Only one shot goes through. Single altar, single altar, 20 apiece. Single altar wins it for either team. Yeah, we usually have snow. Like, when I, where I live, we usually have snow during Thanksgiving. It's pretty common. It's pretty common to either have, to, to, to have snow during, um, Halloween as well. Like it's not a, it's not uncommon, excuse me. I wouldn't say it's pretty common, but either way, single altar, both teams vying over this right now. Let's show everyone's favorite stat that does not actually hold any value, APM. Hook out from the stitches. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a Li Ming player in this world that can actually hit 500 APM on a Li Ming. Isolation from Dahaka does not connect. Big toss from the garage. 
Onto a few, there's gonna be a big lurking arm as well. Huge Warlord's challenge. Li Ming looking for the pop-off right now. She gets one set, it might be over. Genji with the X-Strike read by Li Ming. Light Bomb from the Anduins, not gonna be enough. That's going to be a triple kill. Make it a quadra kill for the side of Magnitude. They come back here in map number two, and ladies and gentlemen, we're heading into a map number three between these two teams. And here, in Division B West, GG. Well played. Up on the rooftop, click, 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 still tracks as a horror song. I, I thought it always was. I like to black out on Thanksgiving. What? What? Where I live, we always say that's not Halloween. If costume over your, a coat over your costume. Got you. Okay, yeah. I mean, I've had, I've had, I've had Halloweens where it's, it's like, it's like warm and hot outside. That was back in Detroit. Um, every Halloween that I've had up here, I can't say for certain. I actually, there was one Halloween where we had like snow the day before, but it like didn't really stick. Because I remember I put a board out because my, my driveway pools a little bit of water sometimes. So I put a board out so people wouldn't get like their shoes wet so they could walk over. But then of course people would jump over the puddle and not use the board that I put down. I'm like, what, what the? I put it out for people to use. Nom 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 arcane orbies. Mm -hmm. Garrosh is dominating that ending. I would agree. I would agree. Uh, thank you again, Nancy, for the tier one gifted sub during that game. Oh, I'm excited about Halloween, man. I'm excited about the month of September, but I'm really excited about October. I'm excited for it to cool down. I'm excited for Halloween stuff. I'm excited for spooky times. Okay. So we're one to one in our scores between these two teams. And uh, as a reminder, in two hour, in three hours, I keep I'm an hour ahead consistently, apparently. In, uh, in about three hours, we're going to be having our live best of three of uh, Mallow Oats versus Gilly Shirk at Bingo Night. So we have a lot of great games up until then, but we're going to have the draft, all that stuff, all that good stuff that I know you guys all love. So uh, let's think we're going to head to Battlefield of Eternity for our next map. Okay. Let's go ahead and get everything set up, and then we can get a little prediction going for this one. Ah, oh, thank you, Nancy. You, you're very, very generous. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, level ones, level ones, level ones. Uh, all right. Uh, one second. Where is? All right, let's do, uh, let's get, let's get wild here. How many level, level one stacks, stacks for Tyriel? Tyriel's gonna be going into uh, T-Y-R-A-E-L, T-Y-R-A. I always, I always think I'm missing up his name. Um, how many stacks for Tyriel by the end? He's gonna be going into globes at one. So let's go ahead and, uh, Let's take a look at this. So let's do, uh, let's do mm, 60 or more, uh, 59 or less, 60 or more, 59 or less. All right. We'll have two minutes on that gamble. We'll have two minutes on that gamble. I will start the game. I'll introduce the teams. Uh, you live in Peru. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for hanging out from Peru. I'm very, uh, very much considering playing it out here in a loud street and observe the confusion and mayhem. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get into our next map. Next map is going to be uh, Battlefield of Eternity, map number three in this first, or this third best three of the day. Uh, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the teams, all that good stuff, and then I'll start the gamble. On the left-hand side, for Magnitude, we have got a Tassadar, Greymane, Artanis, Stukov, and Garrosh. On the side of Gambit Gaming, we're going to see the Falstad, Joanna, Vala, Tyriel, and Brightwing. 
So we'll have a Twitch prediction right now. The Twitch prediction should be going right now for all of you at home. And that is going to be two minutes on how many level one stacks for Tyrael. Tyrael is going to be going regeneration globes at level one. 69 stacks, probably. I should have made it 69 stacks. Uh, be, feel free to get your gambles in, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you, you probably got another minute and 30 from when you're hearing this. Let the battle begin. Alrighty. There you go. There's the Ardent Restoration. Been seeing a lot of materials uh, going into this ever since it was... Uh, I wouldn't say popularized by CCL, but definitely... A lot of popularity from this from CCL. Groundbreaker from Garrosh. Tyriel still waiting in the bush. Dan waiting to jump in here. Tyriel. Uh, we'll see who actually goes up against the uh, Artanis up in the top lane. Because right now it's 5v4 in the bottom. Tyriel will throw the Eldruin Smite. The speed. And Vala goes down. She did go into the Puncturing Arrow at level 1. So she'll be not losing any sort of stacking or any sort of baseline value. Gambit value, if you will. There we go. All right. Hey! Oh, we had 6.9 thousand... We had 6.9k on, um, on one of them for a second. Good gamble, Chad. I'm proud of you. Good gambles. Look at, look at that gambling. Ooh-wee! Look at that gambling, chat. Uh, Garrosh gonna anchor for his, uh, crew. I would have liked to see Ga Garrosh anchor in this bush, but th it's, that's, that's, that's really a non-issue, to be honest. There was, uh, cause there could have been a rotation from here, just, I don't know, it just... Anyways, 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 I miss, I misread it. Regardless, Falstead, Barrel rolls out, Polymorph onto the Garrosh, and he throws back the Jonah. I, I, I completely misread where the camp was, so my apologies, Garrosh was fine. I flipped the two team positioning in my head, so I was like, oh, yeah, I know, Garrosh is in a weird bush right there, but no, he was in the correct one. Polymorph from Brightwing, Falstead throws out a hammering as well, a little lurking arm from the Stukov, Force Wall from the Tassadar, no toss, but that's going to be Greymane with the Dark Flight in. We do have a little bit of a Psy Storm action in the Fort Front Gate, as we do have 55 stacks for the Tassadar a quarter of the way through his level 1 questing tower. Is 69 more or less than 659? Sure. Okay. Uh, five stacks for the Tyrael already. Nearly a uh, tenth of the way through his stacking. <laughs> At least for the prediction. Level fours apiece. Alrighty. So this is going to be repeating arrow assumed for the Vala. What else do we get here? Right wing with the magic spit. We've got Divine Vigor for the Tyrael. Pretty standard across the board. False deck going the updraft. Greymane holding level 4 for now. We'll see what he actually ends up going to. If it's going to be something uh, different. But he does have that viciousness at level 1. You do have the in increased duration of Inner Beast uh, but to 4 seconds. And he also cause the... Uh, excuse me. And causes ability damage to also refresh the duration as well. So more sustainability on that Inner Beast inner beast to try and just burn down the immortals speaking of mortals are here vala falstead starting their autos out 65 stacks for the test that are 12 for the falstead five on the vala and nine stacks for material on those regeneration globes working his way quite quickly through that first 50 percent it's going to be close between the two teams about a thousand a hundred or so difference garish with a toss right there i think Okay, I was, I was like, Joanna's just getting some shield glares to delay things out. And I think Joanna's shield glares might have been exactly what was needed. Oh, no. No, no, no. Immortal blindness. Man, I, have, I keep flipping these two teams in map number three so bad. I keep flipping over which team is on which side. I don't know why I'm doing this. The teams haven't swapped sides. I'm, like, mentally doing it. But either way, that is going to be first immortal to the side of Magnitude, who get a decent damage onto Joanna. She pops the iron skin, backs away... Shock rays out from the Tassadar, 75 stacks currently. Garrosh just taking out these sidewalls, looking for a groundbreaker. Big spin from the Immortal, and uh, this is more... Wow, that's a pretty good shock ray out from Tassadar. 
We still also have the Impaler camp right behind, getting some spears here and there into the fort, as well as into the enemy players. Condemned from Joanna pulls in the units, and that'll be the Immortal Phase ending, with about 30% left on the fort in top lane. False that in bottom lane, trying to get some stacks off the Tyri or off the Artana, excuse me. I actually thought the blind stopped us from getting the Immortal 2. We thought blind saved it. Okay, Punk Rock, I'm not crazy then. Okay, I literally saw the blind. I'm like, dude, they just got that. It was the blind. It's quite the opposite. If the Joanna had just raced with the ally team, you would have... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Poor Joanna player. Poor Rhino. Like, poor Rhino comes into Twitch stream and is just like, wait, it's my fault? <laughs> Did the Groundbreaker not hit Volo? That was weird. Lurking arm from the Stukov. Garrosh looking to just step into the Volo, but he's just being slowed constantly. As I had mentioned, or excuse me, I didn't mention, Subdue was picked up at level 4 for the Joanna, so if she hits 2 or more enemy heroes, she'll be able to get that 80% slow. If she hits 4 enemy heroes, she'll complete the quest and always have the... Wait, she might get it right here! Oh, she went for it, but she misses the Garrosh, because you can see the reduced healing on 3 out of 4 enemy heroes. Ah, Joanna tries to get it. That would have been great if she actually finished that out. That would have been huge for her. That 80% slow with a Vala Falstead for sustained chase... Even with the, the uh, Polymorph from Brightwing, that would have been huge for this team. But it's not picked up. It doesn't matter. 14 stacks for Dan on the Tyrael. Oh, I was, like, watching the Tyrael, and I was assuming he's just going to soak wave, and then immediately he jumps back with the Eldruin Smite. Falstead flies up into the top lane. He flies over the mini wave, so Captain Roberts knows this and has to back away. Falstead tags the camp and will finish this out. Tyrael going to stick around to try and get the Regeneration Globe, pushing to 15. Stacks currently. Garrosh with a groundbreaker right there. Vala continuing to put the pressure onto the Immortal right now. Face shift from Brightwing. Gets the Vala back to nearly full HP. Punk coming in here as well. Greymane jumps in. That's a soothing miss from the Brightwing to get the CC or the slow off of her. Ravala gonna get hit with the groundbreaker, tossed around, but Falstead still has good damage. That's a toss out onto the Grey Main. Big hammerings from the Falstead. Nearly 30 stacks for the power scale, or the uh, the jump in scaling, as he uh, gets the extra 15% at the 30 mark. So right now he's at isn't it like 14.5%? Yeah. So when he gets that next stack, he'll jump up to 30% as you actually see right there. And as I had mentioned, it's an uncapped quest, or I might have not mentioned it's an uncapped quest, much like Vala's puncturing arrow. Uh, but it is going to have, like, kind of a, a reward jump in scaling. Much, actually, the comparison is not Vala's uh, current talent, but her Fire at Will level 1, if she does, if she were to take that. When she gets to that 20 mark, she doubles the damage. Toss from Garrosh. Brightwing's the target. I don't know. She didn't have Blink Heal because there's no level 10. Immortal will go over to the side of uh, Gambit Gaming. Alrighty. Immortal goes into bottom lane. Buffed by the hellish side of the uh, all these, all these our demonic our demonic boys just hey. Uh, meanwhile, in bottom lane, some some actual happenings on the map here. Curse bullet from the Greymane right into the face of Joanna. She's dropped down to around fifty percent from the damage also from Tassadar. Face shift from Brightwing. Black hole from Tassadar. Curse bullet as we already saw. Bless shield gust. So pretty pretty standard heroics. There's a gust into the wall, a little anti-synergistic with the Condemn, but a black hole from Tassadar feels more of a zoning tool than anything else is. Vala gets chunked to 50% from the black hole right there. The demon's attack has failed, yet we have not seen the end of it. Alright, thanks for hanging out, Looper. You have a good night, bud. Get some good sleep. We'll see you next time. Condemned from Joanna. She gets that slow, tossed out by Garrosh, but there's a lot of damage in from the false dead and Vala. Garrosh, though, with that armor is going to be able to just mitigate some of the incoming damage while he's falling low. There's a great blast shield from the Joanna. She'll pop that subdue onto two. Healing reduction, Warlord's challenge. Polite Gamer getting a little bit low here. Wraithling looking to maybe just keep that inner beast active. As I always mention, that glow on the weapons you can see. Means his inner beast is still going right there, but that will expire. Artana's gonna steal away the camp, or at least we'll see if he if he can. 
Ball of Vision, she'll see this Artanis right here. But she's got the Joanna with her, blind from the Artanis. Vala continues to try and throw out the damage. Nice use of the uh, Reign of Vengeance as well. Toss from the Artanis, Black Hole from the Tassadar, Gus from the Falstead, pushing people around. Artanis is going to be saved. The camp still goes over to the side of Gambit Gaming. Magnitude, the Hungering Arrow is going to bounce, and it doesn't get the kill. Stukov with the healing, the clutch heal just in time, and camp still goes over to the side of Gambit Gaming. So polite, thank you. <laughs> oh god, I do like I, li I do like the polite gamer on Garrosh. That is kind of funny. Uh, what are we at? Twenty-two stacks on the Tyrael. He's working his way up through these. Another immortal face here, spawning in the north-south positioning, and Vala immediately goes for the race. So that was interesting. Or that was interesting? Oh yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Garrosh gets the toss on Deterial, who pops the Sanctification. Joanna with the Condemn, getting a little bit of the... I don't think she, she had anyone with the Subdue right there. Big lurking arm out from the Stukov. I'm waiting patiently here. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the, for the engagement to pop off. Bottom lane will lose the fort. Falstad barrel rolls over the over the wall just to get over here a little bit quicker. And Tassadar to clear out the top lane. And Immortals will spot swap to uh, I'm assuming east west positioning, but it's random, so it could it could just be north south again, and it actually is. Tyrael does had oh he had the Eldruin's might for a second. Vala and friends immediately just go for the race. The blind from the Artanis, but Vala vaults right out of it. Groundbreaker from Garrosh. Big rain of vengeance from the Vala as well. Wraithling looking to get some damage in here. Has to roll away. Force wall from the Tassadar with the electric fence. Gus from Falstead. Warlord's challenge from Polite Gamer. Rain of vengeance from the Vala. Polymorph onto Garrosh. He's getting low. Does go down. Bless shield from the Joanna. Does lock people in place for a second. Artanis going to try and just power through the enemy with a lot of damage and shielding. Wraithling getting low. Swap from Artanis doesn't connect. Black Hole from Tassadar, neither as well. Little Blade Dash from the Artanis, and this is going to be Vala stepping immediately in. He swaps, and Captain Roberts finds himself in a very bad spot. Greymane dives in. Vala continuing to get those autos out, as we also have the Tassadar finishing his level 1 questing talent, 21 stacks on the Qs for Vala. She's got 126 extra damage. Keep in mind, there's baseline scaling. That Hungering Arrow, if it jumps to the Grey Main, will it actually kill him? Ah, uh, no, the share of the bounces. But let's talk about this big bad Belleth in the top lane. He's dealing 746 standard damage, 1,492 into structures, 8,206 damage into minions insta kill onto the minion wave but with the shield and everything immortal at 40,000 20,000 hp about 20,000 shielding this big bad belleth is thick you're not even my war chief wow someone likes someone likes women who burn down giant trees I don't know the lore of World of Warcraft. That's all I know is that like, Sylvanas burned down a giant tree and everyone got upset. <laughs> Falstead's looking for the angle on the gust. And he's sharking. If he angles here, he can gust into the uh, allied team, but no, nah, the angle doesn't work out. Maybe onto Punk, he could have pushed Punk into this corner, but no, nah, still. They save the gust, they hold on to it. I think Keep Front Gate takes a bit of damage, but I don't think we get more than even that. Gust from Falstead, Indomitable was used. There goes most of the gate going down. Massive shove onto the Tyrael as he's going to be at 29 stacks on that level 1. And Tyrael kind of enjoying himself here, waiting for his ally team. Just hanging out like, oh, well, I guess I'm by the camp. What's up, guys? 30th stack for the Tyrael right now. Believers are uh, feeling, maybe they're starting to feel a little bit better. Doubters maybe starting to worry on that uh, on that prediction right there. Savannah's did nothing wrong. I I agree. I'm I'm not flaming. I just she burned down a tree and people got upset. I don't know why. Savannah's is no one's war chief. Ah, uh, I don't know. Quite literally, my war chief was and is innocent. 
There you go. Another condemn from the Joe and a push it pull in the wave. We have a rotation down to bottom lane, a swap from the Artanis onto the Falstead who gusts away the enemy. Minion wave is here, but I don't think it's going to take down the fort as the 16 talent tier advantage for Gambit Gaming will expire soon. Double camp in through the top lane to be cleared out. Next to mortal phase will be north south positioning with the race potential on the south side for magnitude, race potential on the north side for the members of Gambit Gaming. That tree had it coming. See, there you go. I don't know why people are upset about a tree burning down. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the vision for this one. Avala immediately shredded. Blinds out from the Joanna by a moment here. Okay, they, yeah, I was gonna, like, Tyrael gets the kill onto the Tassadar. That was a bit of a split chase right there. Bright wing for Tassadar. The Tyrael doesn't have sanctification for 70 something seconds, but he gets out with the Eldrin's Might. Slows from the Stukov, lurking arm as well. Does have that low blow from level one, so I can be conscious of that one. Conscious of that one. Vala, she's trying, she's trying to get some race potential here, but Ca oh, great swap from Captain Roberts, and that's the twin blade to get the immediate kill onto him. Do you have the Blades of Templar from level 16 as well? Alright. So first 50% of the Immortal phase will be going over the side of uh, Gambit Gaming, if I'm not mistaken. No, other way around. Magnitude. Huge black hole. There's a force wall on the far side. Reign of Vengeance from the Vala. She's getting very low. A lot of very low red health bars as Punk wants this kill. The Shock Ray gets the last little bit of damage right there. Nicely played from Punk. And Falstead dead for the next three seconds. He was killed a little bit earlier. Krizo was the target, but now Greymane needs to back away. Garrosh tanking some tower shots. Shock Ray up from Tassadar. Tyrael able to dip dive and dodge around as he does have that Sword of Justice. Swap from Martanus does not connect with the Blade Dash and Face Prism. And this is nearly a fully shielded Immortal going over to the side of Magnitude. This is huge for them in the late game of Battlefield of Eternity. Swap from Martanus onto Falstead. Barrel rolls away again. Has the Gust available. Captain Roberts drops the blind. And Dan is also out of here. 34 regeneration globes, as I thought Dan might be trying to step in to steal one or two. Top lane has a catapult arriving at keep, and this is going to be dealing 570 damage into structures. One, two, three. Maybe we get a fourth catapult shot onto the keep. And I think that'll be it. Tassadar should get the clear before it does get another. There is no place where evil can hide from my games. I will bring down I'm still trying to wrap my head around the sync pick. I have been waiting for a moment of oh, but nothing. There's been, there's been, a, there's been, de there's been definitely one good sanctification for sure. There's been one really good sanctification. Um, I can't point out another one. Unfortunately, right there, he tried to put, he tried to push sanctification. You can see it's on a 10 second cooldown now. As the top lane immortal will get quite a bit of damage here. Keep from gate is going to be going down. Will keep fall after Tyrael did get taken out. Garrosh looking for the Groundbreaker. Blind from Martanis. Creates a little more space for the team to step in. Toss from Garrosh. She's creating more room for the allies as well. Condemn from Joanna. She's got that slow, that shield glare. Greymane poking out as well. That's going to be a dive in and Vala goes down. This should be top lane keep to fall, but I don't think this is game. I don't think this is game right here. The reason being is I think there's enough defensive tools with False Tyrael, Brightwing, and Joanna. Good poke out from Falstead as well as he's got 80 stacks on that level 1 hammering. Also has the cooldown reduction synergy of level 13, 16. He's got that Flow Rider. While, while Tailwind is active, Basic Falstead's basic abilities recharge 100% faster. And then the Airy Gust is going to be reduced the activation time of Tailwind from 5 to 3 seconds and increase the movement speed bonus from 15 to 25. Build says I want to dive and rush at you. I think I think Tyrael should have just gone judgment. I like judgment here. But that's also because I like judgment. Okay. Another immortal phase will spawn the north-south positioning. Race potential to the south side for the members of magnitude. 
race potential on the north side for the side of Gambit Gaming. So until then, until that announcement, we're just going to see some camps to be grabbed, and level 20 might be achieved by the members of Magnitude. When he walks, he he kind of quacks. Huh? Who? Who quacks? 20 talents here. All right, what do we have? The uh, Force Barrier, the Hunter Blunderbuss, we have the Zealot's, Char Zealot's Charge, Bio Explosion Switch, and the Titanic Might. Half a level to go for the 20s. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Big rotation into, into bottom, potentially. Material scene. Wow, really safe rotation to be had right there. And they're gonna be able to clear out the top lane on the side of Gambit Gaming, but this is gonna be the first half of the Immortal Phase immediately burned down in favor of Magnitude. Aries, hey, guys, you remind me of Aerials? Oh yeah, the system of a down song? Absolutely. All right, 20 talents here through the top lane. Tyrael will be able to finish this out with the uh, Catapult. And then it's just an immediate race from the members of Magnitude. Can you really blame them if the enemy team's going for that 20? But is this going to be a team fight that stops the race potential? Artanis trying to burn through. There's the blinds on the left-hand side. We have a big jet blessed shield. There's a huge condemn. A gust out from the false step with the wind tunnel as well. We do have that level 20 from the Joanna applying some shielding to the allied team. It's also going to be defense of the angels. Oh, this is just for Tyrael. That's just for Tyrael. He doesn't actually af affect the allies, whereas this one is uh, blinded by the light from the Joanna. Wow. What a turnaround moment. Punk is going to try and burn down the rest of this immortal. He might... He will be able to do this. Yeah, he's got this. There's... Yeah, that was a sneaky, but is Punk going to be punished for this? I can't see a war I don't see a world where he's not punished. Yeah. All right, Immortal goes to bottom lane to the side of Magnitude, but only a, lo a lone gray main to defend. I expect this Immortal to really not get any value in lane. I expect it to make it to like hereish and then die. Maybe it gets a couple autos, maybe it takes down it maybe it takes down actually it takes down the keep front gate, but that's about it. Maybe not even that. Vala is 36 stacks right now. Maybe not even get one attack. I mean, she's got 216. Ah, I was right with my prediction. Uh, she's got 216 bonus damage, and then the baseline damage is 319. She's got 525 damage. No, 535 damage, if my math is correct. 535 damage on the first bounce of the arrow. And then keep in mind, there's additional bounces of 182 currently. Worth it. <laughs> I mean, it created space. You didn't, you, the members of Magnitude didn't lose anything during that uh, that that massive, uh, I mean, obviously they lost the experience lead as it's, it's, it's shifted over to the side of Gambit Gaming, but still, but still. Uh, by the way, 49 stacks for the Tyrael as we are entering minute 23 of this game. He'll have 50 stacks right here. 10 more regeneration globes to go. Nine more regeneration globes to go. Seven more. <laughs> uh, Garrosh is set up in the bush over here. I'm gonna swap vision really, really quickly just between the two and see what these two teams are seeing. I'll swap back over this way. All right. Looking for a flank. We know that they're coming from over here on the left-hand side. Uh, there's, yeah, they, now they, they can see this happening. Tyrael's gonna get tossed. Curse Bullet is gonna be wide. Sanctification, there's the gust from the false set as well. Force wall from the Tassadar coming out as well. Big black hole from Tassadar. Artanis is low, he goes down to the Vala. Have all those caltrops on the ground from her level 20. There's like four repeating arrows that can go out from her. Vala's burst ability is absolutely insane right now. Top lane has a camp pushing in in favor for the side of Gambit Gaming. This, I think this actually gets top lane keep with the catapult right now. Minion wave is a little bit off from spawning. 
Actually, no, I was wrong on that one. It was, it was almost immediately ready for spawning. Still, though, Fallen Shaman, as long as it's spawning these hounds, it should be good. Can it spawn another hound? Uh, top lane keep is going to target him. Anyways, let's take a look at the race between these two teams. Artanis down for the next 25 seconds, and this is the quick burn race in favor for the side of Mag... Or, excuse me, for Gambit Gaming. Magnitude going to get invaded over here on the left-hand side. They toss away the Joanna. They don't steal away the camp. The top lane keep does go down, as mentioned. Tyrael at 54 stacks. Did he miss those regeneration globes? I feel like he did. All right, Gambit Gaming with a really strong immortal through bottom lane. Is it game ending? 25 minutes in. 55 stacks on the Tyrael. Nice shock ray out from the tester. We'll pull away the talent so we can see everything a little bit better. Top waves are going to be uh, pushed back a little bit over here, so these catapults are not something to be worried about approaching the core. Another force wall from Tassel. He's got that force barrier level 20, so you can pretty much spam those force walls. It's like a four second cooldown or so. As Vala with the vault forward gets some decent damage onto that garage. We have Tyrael jumping in as well. Reign of Vengeance, wind tunnel from the Falstead. Punk might be the target. Punk does go down to the Vala. Reign of Vengeance once again from the Vala. She vaults forward. Another hungering arrow into the face of the enemy as the massive shove does push Vala back. We have a toss out from the garage as well. Tyrael stepping forward here. More globes, more globes. We'll see what it looks like at the end, because this might be game right here, right now. Immortal at 50% or so. Joanna pops the blinded by the light level 20, giving some shieldings to the allies. Huge toss out from the Garrosh. I thought it was a wind tunnel from the Falstead, but not the case, because it's on a 30 second cooldown. Still, Garrosh does go down to the Vala. We've got the core falling rapidly, and ladies and gentlemen, map number three goes over to the side of Gambit Gaming, a fantastic best of three series. GG, well played. Gambit Gaming takes this series.